Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to the marketplace. Coming up, some oil marketing firms begin reducing prices of petroleum products at the pumps with oil selling a litre of petrol at 14 cities, 22 pesos. Diesel going for 14 cities, 90 pesos. We'll have more. Also coming up, Bank of Ghana reveals further monetary tightening still needed despite continuous decline in inflation to 20.9%. Plus, the World Bank set to disperse $1 billion to Ghana over the next 12 months as it insists the economy is recovering from COVID-19 shocks and the recent crisis. We have our portfolio and then we have our pipeline. Mm -hmm. So in terms of our portfolio, as I mentioned, the $4.4 billion, mm -hmm. uh, of that we, are disper we dispersed over the past six months just over $1 billion mm -hmm. over the past, sorry, 12 months in Ghana, $1 billion. More from that interview coming up. My name is Daryl Carl. Thanks for being with us. Don't go anywhere. Thanks for staying with us, everyone. I want to begin with a look at the currency market as we close the week. Uh, this afternoon, the dollar going for 16 cities, 10 pesos. That's how much it is selling. Uh, the pound, 20 cities, 25 pesos. The euro also selling at 17 cities, 50 pesos. Uh, we have got the figures for the yuan as well, selling at 2 cities, 16 pesos. And the run, um, 86, uh, 0.86 uh, pesos there. And so that's... Uh, how it's looking like on the currency market uh, this afternoon as we close the week, the dollar uh, inching to six cities, 10 pesos. Now, you know that has an impact on fuel prices. Well, some oil marketing companies have started reducing prices of petroleum products at the pumps. Uh, market leader Guell is this morning or this afternoon selling a litre of petrol at 14 cities, 22 pesos. That's representing almost 2% decline. Diesel has gone down by 9 pesos, is selling at 19 cities, 90 pesos per litre. Market watchers are attributing this adjustment to the CD's sustained recovery and stability of crude oil prices on the international market. Uh, many will be looking forward to seeing the margin of reduction for the over 100, over 100 oil marketing companies in the country following the action taken by Guell. Yeah, I know I talked about the CD's stability, but um, as we've seen, um, the city has hit 16 uh, cities to the dollar. We don't know how, for how long that stability is going to uh, remain, but that's the latest information from the currency market. Uh, 16 cities, 10 pesos, uh, the city going to the dollar. Well, let's turn attention to other news. The Bank of Ghana has revealed that further policy rate hikes may still be needed to help bring inflation under control. This is in response to push by some businesses for immediate reduction in Bank of Ghana's key lending rates to commercial banks. Here's George Raffi with more. Persons close to the Bank of Ghana have told Joy Business that they still want to ensure that inflation has slowed significantly towards that comfortable range before they react. Therefore, it might be difficult now to respond to the recent inflation numbers over the past four months. It however assured that their decision in terms of policy rate reviews going forward will be strictly guided by the current economic data and outlook. The Bank of Ghana has also added that they don't want to be overtaken by events by rushing to cut rates now, only to come back for some significant hike. The policy rate currently stands at 29%. All right, and thanks for staying with us here on the marketplace. Now, the World Bank is set to disperse twelve uh, one billion dollars for, for the next twelve months uh, as a way of supporting uh, the government of Ghana. The bank maintains that it is now satisfied with the reforms that the government is undertaking to put the economy on a strong footing. My colleague George Raffi has been speaking with the new World Bank country director Robert O'Brien on PM Express Business Edition. We have, our, we have our portfolio and then we have our pipeline. Mm -hmm. So in terms of our portfolio, as I mentioned, the 4.4 billion, mm -hmm. uh, of that we, are disper we dispersed over the past six months 
just over $1 billion mm. over the past, sorry, 12 months in Ghana, $1 billion. Um, of, the, of those expenditures on goods and services, construction, and so on, 70% of that funding was um, dispersed uh, to uh, Ghanaian companies. Mm -hmm. So 70% of, of, of those funds dispersed to Ghanaian companies. So I think a significant economic impact as well. And going forward in the next 12 months, we expect to disperse another $1 billion. Uh, so, so that's where we are. Now, looking forward to your, your question, uh, our board of directors has approved, as you said, recently um, in June and July, and even into early August, over 830 new dollars, $830 million, uh, including the, uh, a project on financial stability, mm -hmm. a project on energy sector reform, yeah. Yeah. Uh, those are 250 million each, mm. um, and um, uh, and uh, and then the DPO was mm. approved in January. That's mm. 300 million, uh, and then there's uh, additional funding for the Gamma Water Project of 30 million. So that is the 830 that I'm talking about. Um, the uh, the the uh, energy project, the financial. Uh, sector project and the water project are, are still now with Parliament. Mm. I understand Parliament will reconvene soon and we're very hopeful that they will approve those loans so we can get to having the impact mm. uh, uh, in those sectors that, mm. uh, that we can have. Executive Director for Dane Associates Dolores Dixon is calling for effective collaboration to foster the growth of the social enterprise sector. According to her, the lack of tailored policy and attention to the sector, which leverages business models to champion social change, has negatively impacted growth. She spoke to Joy Business at a stakeholder engagement as part of the Social Enterprise Accelerator Program organized by Dane Sue Associates with support from the MasterCard Foundation. Social enterprises play a critical role in addressing social, economic and environmental challenges. In Ghana, there are approximately 26,000 social enterprises, many of which are micro or small. Funding and limited access to advisory services remain some of the key challenges affecting the sector. In light of this, the Social Enterprise Accelerator Program, championed by Dinsu Associates, will provide tailored support to enable social enterprises to expand their reach, create jobs, and secure investments. Speaking to Joy Business, the executive director of Dinsu Associates, Dolores Dixon, noted that effective collaboration will champion the cause of the sector. It's a space that needs a lot of um, collaboration to grow. We are very familiar with the non-profit sector and we're also very familiar with the for-profit sector. This sector lies in the middle and we need to be able to normalize the sector where we're using business principles to address social problems. And that is the way we can be very sustainable as a country, addressing our social problems by using business principles so that we can be sustainable. So I think that the collaboration is critical because we are at a start of something great to happen. So when all the different stakeholders come together and collaborate, that's the way we are going to be able to make an impact. We need finance, for-profit, government, we need um, non-profits. We all need to come together to be able to make this happen. Alexander Tete, president and founder of the Center for Employment for Persons with Disability, called for tailored financial support for social enterprises. Government should think about this not only government but also uh, the private sector and uh, philanthropists should also identify social entrepreneurs and support them for the work that they do government must be intentional about this because social entrepreneurs create a lot of jobs not only jobs but also create uh, um, um, solve a lot of problems within our society Dr. Yakubu Yusuf, a social entrepreneur and executive director for Hope for Hair Foundation, explained that proper policy frameworks will be needed to support the sector. In Ghana currently, you cannot register an organization as a social enterprise. Um, a lot of discussions are going around it, but mostly what people do is to register as NGOs, um, um, limited by guarantee, I think, and then you go for a social um, um, social. Um, enterprise certificates from the social welfare. That's what people do. So we are hoping that um, that is resolved. So people can register organizations that are social enterprise to run a social enterprise. So that's one of the main challenges which we hope um, in the near future would be resolved.
The Social Enterprise Accelerator Program is powered by Densu Associates with support from the MasterCard Foundation. 40 students at the Faculty of Allied Health Sciences of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology have been introduced to the use and management of advanced diagnostics ultrasound systems. The intervention is to equip the students with hands-on knowledge in medical imaging to sharpen their proficiency in device handling. Here's a report by Clinton Yeboah. In an effort to improve the technical knowledge of aspiring medical imaging experts, Casono Global Limited is helping to train a skilled workforce in the Ghana health sector. Well, now, Students from the Faculty of Allied Health Sciences at the KNUST who are aspiring to be medical imaging experts, sonographers and radiographers, were introduced and trained with advanced ultrasound imaging machines in healthcare facilities to improve diagnostic accuracy and patient outcomes. Radiologists and clinical applications are Mind Ray, Dr. Mary Goriti highlighted the need to be equipped with knowledge on the sophisticated health machines as health practitioners. She indicated that the new systems would be a game changer in the ultrasound imaging services in healthcare in Ghana. Increasing number of diseases with complexity, it is very important, therefore, to also introduce improved technology that can enhance diagnostic confidence. Uh, to the users and that is why we are here so that we help the users acquire the best technology for their daily use. Uh, students need a lot of practical and uh, for that we always have sessions with them. Uh, from time to time we create sessions at the teaching institution so that we teach them how to do at least basic scanning and also how to use the modern, the current technologies, and uh, you know, to give them more advantage in the field, uh, we introduce the current technology that can also enhance them to use ultrasound even with minimal experience that they'll have. I was taking them through the current uh, smart and intelligent tools that enhances their confidence. The Kasona Mind Ray demonstration was held on the sideline of the opening of the Kumasi branch of the Kasona Global Imaging Limited to offer a variety of medical imaging equipment in line with the commitment to addressing the gaps in healthcare infrastructure. Facility manager for Kasona, Richard Enti, says the demonstration initiative will help the aspiring medical personnel to handle advanced imaging equipment for effective service delivery. Meanwhile, some participants say the hands-on training has complemented their theoretical studies in their theoretical studies in school. Benton Yeboah's report for Joy News. Now the Climate Compatible Growth CCG program in Ghana has launched a special interest groups uh, CIG to drive the country's energy transition and climate resilient development. The five SIGS uh, focus on specific areas including New Energy Vehicle Group, Green Hydrogen, Financing the Energy Transition, Inclusive Net Zero Emissions, Future and Clean Cooking, and each has its own thematic focus and activities aimed at promoting the adoption of CCG research and knowledge products. These products will be translated into capacity building initiatives, and the CIG it will also generate new knowledge through various mechanisms to help shape Ghana's sustainable future. Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin has more. The Climate Compatible Growth CCG program funded by the UK government aims to reduce carbon emissions in the energy and transport sectors. We're willing to look at the logistics involved and see how best we can uh, support you. Uh, recently, she's working on the SIG on financing the energy transition. There's the other group in UK, one of their PhD students is developing a tool to be able to model how you can you know, look at investment opportunities for the energy transition. So they are, apart from the FIN plan, they are also developing what you call the main FIN, another tool that they want to you know, roll it out. And they are looking at country specific. So they've done for Kenya and they also want to do for Ghana. So data is very important. How do you access the data? So we felt sitting you know, in our offices and calling people is difficult to access those data. So we were able to organize a workshop, invited you know, key stakeholders to come and you know, talk about the, the model that is being developed and how we can get people to participate and contribute so as to make sure that we can get the model developed also 
for Ghana. So Ghana is one of six countries participating in, in this initiative with activities coordinated by the Brew Harmon Energy Center at Kwame Krumah University of Science and Technology, KNUST. According to co-coordinator of CCG activities in Ghana, Professor Francis Kemo also, the program's implementation is guided by a country-specific strategy document and involve collaboration with special interest groups to achieve its objectives. So what we are doing today is launching the special interest groups. Uh, right now we have five of them. Um, we have the, the special interest group on clean cooking. Uh, we have one on green hydrogen. Uh, we have one on um, new uh, vehicles. Uh, we have one on net zero emissions. And then we have one on financing the energy transition. Professor Kemal also, also hinted at the potential expansion of the special interest groups to encompass additional areas in the future, further supporting Ghana's energy transition process. This means that the CCG program may evolve to address emerging needs and opportunities, ensuring a comprehensive approach to decarbonizing the energy and transport sectors in Ghana. So we want to start with these five, uh, and we are hoping that we move on from the five uh, and include other areas that are of importance to Ghana's energy transition uh, in the near future. A report by Mohamed Nuruddin. Asante Go Chirano Limited has received commendation for its social intervention programs targeted at accelerating people development in the mines catchment communities. These interventions include skills training for the local youth to be employable. Jotwaine of Sehiria is the traditional council and chief of Sehiria and Anakofi Nkwa II um, says opportunities being offered by Asante Gochirano are transforming lives in the area and improving the living conditions of local communities. Here's more. The John Tuahini was speaking at the ceremony for 12 students who received scholarships from the mind to study at the Kumasi Methodist Technical and Vocational Institute. The three-year training program equipped the beneficiaries with skills in automobile engineering, welding and fabrication, building and construction, mechanical engineering and electrical engineering. According to Nana Enkwa, Asante Gold Chirano has over the years offered youth training opportunities which have benefited and lifted many families out of poverty. Chirano has really done well because no family member of yours may be able to take care of you to this level you've gotten to. Since the establishment of the mine, the host communities have benefited a lot. <laughs> Yeah. General Manager of Asante Gold Toronto Limited, Stephen Asante Yamwa, reiterated the company's firm belief in a transformative power of education. This was the beginning of a journey filled with endless possibilities. The skills and knowledge you have acquired will serve as the foundation for your future. The training in automobile engineering, welding and fabrication, building and construction, mechanical engineering, and electrical engineering isn't just about trees. It's about building sustainable career and thriving communities. You are now part of our collective effort to provide skills training for local youth, making them employable. The students are now part of the MINES collective efforts to provide skills training for local youth, making them employable. Last year, 50 youth received truck driving training, and many of them are now gainfully employed by business partners of Asante Gold. Mr. Yamwa again. Four years ago, we established a Chera Anusafi Mines scholarship scheme with Nananu, a full scholarship covering teaching and CPMs. I'm thrilled to announce that the first beneficiaries of this scholarship will be graduating this year. Deputy Tourism Minister Mark Okweku faced the uh, Public Accounts Committee this week. He was quizzed about the theatre industry. I want you to take a listen. Paragraph 1781, Honorable Yusuf. Thank you. Chairman, the infraction relates to the renovation of the... Chairman, thank you. 
Chairman, the infraction relates to the renovation of the National Theatre. What is the state of it as we speak in terms of its renovation? Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, it is good that the parliamentarians are asking this question because originally we wanted to get support from the Chinese government because they built the National Theatre for us, especially to do with technology. Uh, it's been so many years, and so some of the technology there are outmoded. And getting them from other countries was also difficult. And so um, it's been back and forth because we, they keep changing the ambassador and all of that. So we are still pursuing uh, with the Chinese embassy. But if Ghana government would also help, I think it, it will be prudent in terms Please. of budget to fix the National Theatre. Minister, you, uh, uh, you are the Deputy Minister. Yes, Honorable Chair. And yeah. you are saying if, government, if you think if Ghana government can help, mm. you should be the one with your ministry mm. proposing to the President okay, that is what you think should be done. So it's not for us here to tell you how that thing should be done. That's why you've been appointed as a deputy minister to help your minister to get this done. But the truth of the matter is that it's also as a result of lack of maintenance. And I find it very interesting that uh, the Public Accounts Committee is taking this up. Joining me in studio is um, culture journalist uh, Kenneth Osu Daku to uh, talk a bit more about this. And so, I mean, this really our chain. <laughs> I've been corrected. Okay, I'll see that. Uh, this really uh, brings to fore the importance of the national theatre uh, to our economy. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that. I mean, beyond ticket sales, what's the contribution to the national theatre to our economy? And even to extend how important this topic is, is the fact that even earlier this week there, were, uh, there was a town hall meeting held by um, the NDC flag bearer, John Mahama, who also mm -hmm. indicated um, how his administration, if given the nod, will work towards improving the creative sector and the cinema uh, industry specifically, which also ties into theatre and then um, other areas as well. So that makes it even more important. But coming to the role of that space, basically the theatre space mm. in bolstering the creative industry in Ghana, I mean, the fact that there are people in the theatre performing is one thing, but there's also the other part of the, you know, the chain where it has, it has to do with economics and how the community benefits economically from, from that. So if there is a theater happening or there's a show happening, it's not just the acting that's going on or, and all of that, but there's also employment being created because you have to hire actors, you have to hire uh, film directors, you have to hire um, you know, playwrights as well. You have to hire so many people in the value chain and even outside the area as well, you can also find some economic activity going on you find retailers selling their wear because as, as long as there are people in a certain space, you'd find that there's economic activity going around there. Right. So that's also employment being created even outside the immediate you know, remit of the theater space itself. So people are getting employed outside that space as well. And it also goes on to boost the tourism in the area too. I, I'm interested in, in hearing what he had to say about uh, the national theater, the challenges that they're, they're faced with. Um, what did he really say? So he basically talked about the fact that there's some facelift that's needed for the National Theatre itself in terms of the infrastructure, also in terms of technology. That's also another area that is being looked at. He, according to him, there has been some, you know, uh, steps that have been taken while, you know, during the, 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 the governance of this specific, you know, administration. There have been some minor steps being taken, but it has not been enough. And he's basically calling for, and he says that some of the attempts that have been made is, you know, includes the, you know, they reach out, reaching out to the Chinese embassy because they had a very huge hand in the building of the infrastructure itself, that's the National Theatre. How are we reaching out to the Chinese? I'm yeah. wondering. So he says that because all efforts that have been made to reach other international bodies have not gone very far, so they feel like um, it will be also, you know, out of empathy or something that they may consider because if the technologies were created, like the technologies that are being used to man the facility you are from China, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be, you know, out of place to maybe put some requests in there. But the problem has been, you know, the changes, the regular changes of ambassadors and officials that usually engage, you know, the local government as well. So those changes are making it very difficult. But beyond that, he's hoping that um, the government itself can, you know, extend a helping hand to help the industry as well. I, I mean, we've seen public interest in theater productions, um, 
people going to watch uh, some of these productions. And, and so I'm just uh, wondering what are the long-term benefits for us as a country if we are able to put in monies into um, our theater industry, into making our national theater you know, a place where people can go and, and watch some of these beautiful productions. So tourism is a big thing when it comes to the, the um, you know, National Theatre itself. I mean, the, the sort of activities that go on there go a very long way to promote the local, the rich culture that Ghana usually portrays and is known internationally for. So that is one thing that is a benefit, a long-term benefit that's going to be you know, achieved through you know, improving the structure itself as a national theater. There's also the economic revenue as well. I mean, if you look at the fact that in Africa alone, it's projected that by the end of this year, um, the revenue from the theater or the cinema industry as a whole is projected to, to hit over $700 million this year. Mm -hmm. And it's projected to grow at, you know, 5% rate year on year till about, um, you know, uh, 2029, there about where it's projected to hit about $900 million. And so this is a very huge chunk of the cake when you look at the theater and cinema industry around the world. And that is just for Africa. So if you look at this figure that we are quoting, and you look at the fact that there is the need to propel or improve how some of these theaters here are looking like, you can basically imagine right. what kind of revenue that's going to be coming in for these you know, individual artists and then the creative as well, and also go a long way to boost the economy as a whole. Oh, I'm, I'm glad that the MPs are taking this up. And so thank you so much. I don't know why I called you also, but <laughs> Ken Ochidako, culture journalist with myjoinline.com. As always, we appreciate it. And that's the Marketplace. Thanks for watching, everyone. There's more news on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. More on the fuel prices uh, going down, IES's projection. You can read more about that. And the interview with the new country director of uh, the World Bank, uh, Robert O'Brien. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your weekend.